Welcome inside the WOSN studios. Thank you for joining us tonight. Mark, it's our final March <laughs> Madness of the basketball season. He's Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. We made it. It seems like we just got started. It the really does. Basketball season just raced by, as it really, always. It really did, and we're going to crown some state champs this weekend coming up on Saturday. Before we get there, though, we've got a lot to talk about, a lot to break down. Right. Start right with it. Division One, Lima Senior. They beat St. John's, something they couldn't do twice earlier in the season, but then lost to Lakewood St. Ed in the regional final. And remember, that's last year's defending state champ. Yeah, and of course, it was a bigger, physical, powerful team inside. I think eventually they wore the Spartans down a little bit and came back and won that basketball game in the fourth quarter. But a lot of great experience for the Spartans, who are young, and they also have the Division I Co-Player of the Year, and Xavier Simpson. He'll be back next yep. year. A lot of positives to take from this season as a whole, right? Well, I would really agree with that. If you want to look at how they grew as a team this year, let's just take a, a little look at St. John's. They lose to St. John's, giving up 82 points in overtime at home. They lose to St. John's at St. John's, give up 81. But by the end of the season, when they played them in the tournament, they gave them just 41 points. So they really, really improved defensively through the course of the year. And the table is set for the future. Great job by Coach Quincy Simpson in his first season. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, now he's going to have a chance to take his team in the offseason. He'll have them all spring, summer, and fall. He's going to go to those team camps. The kids know him. He knows them. He's been through the league. He understands what all the league coaches are like, how they're going to try to play him. It's a really good situation for the Spartans. Obviously, you don't want to look too far ahead. Look at what happens. You get an injury. You get somebody gets hurt. Things happen, but the table is set for the Spartans to be very good. Without a doubt. Pugsley's the lone senior. He'll be yep. graduating and then lots to look forward to for next year. Let's move to Division Two now. Up to Bowling Green, Defiance yep. Salina, WBL rematch, and Defiance beats Salina and advances on to state. Kirk Lehman's team, of course, was so good defensively throughout the course of the year. They gave up just 48 points when they lost at Salina during the regular season. This time they gave them just 43. So Defiance puts 48 on the board. Very, very good defensively. They give up just 30 points to Parma Heights Holy Name, 33 in the, in the regional final. They have their work cut out for them now, but certainly Coach Lehman has his team playing very well. They'll take on Dayton Dunbar yep. on Friday. Dunbar defeated Franklin, which uh, a lot of attention on yeah. that game because of Luke Kennard and then Harris on Dunbar, who's going to Ohio State. He's committed to go to Ohio State. And I think that Dunbar could pose some problems for Defiance, but they've played great competition up to this point. So how do you think this one's going to play out? Well, I think you're exactly right. This is a Dunbar team. They won the state championship in 2012. That was when Elida and Reggie McAdams and his crew were down there. They defeated Elida in the finals. Um, Peter Pullen, of course, is back as coach. It's the same type of team. It's a very physical, aggressive defensive team that likes to get out and run. But Defiance has the ability to slow the game down, uh, to defend. If they can score enough points inside and kind of keep Dunbar from getting on those big runs, they can compete. Dunbar's the favorite, but don't count Defiance out. Back to Franklin for a second. Yeah. Just want to mention Luke Kennard. He finished his second all-time on the Ohio scoring list. He finished with 2,977 uh, 2 career points second behind John Diebler, but you know, a lot of people are interested in seeing him play at state and yep. Dunbar didn't let that happen. That's right, the 13 point lead got away from him in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. Luke Kennard is one of those special young men that come along. You know, now he's a great basketball player and he has all kinds of tools. He's a 4.0 student, he's president of their FCA huddle. He's one of those top notch kids and my hope is when he goes to Duke, he doesn't become the kid everybody hates. He'll go compete in the ACC, but you hope he does well. Yeah, we'll follow him, yep. him closely as well, along with a bunch of our local guys. How about D3? In Bowling Green, LCC yep. defeats OG. These two teams always meet. Now LCC <laughs> leads the all-time series by one, if right. you can believe it or not, after 70-some-odd meetings. And the T-Birds now are going back to state. And they did it in two different ways. You know, They outscored OG. Now, obviously, they had to play some defense to get there, but they gave up 63 to OG. They gave up just 42 to Hartley. Yep. So they, they won it in two different manners, a 54-42 game in the final, 72-63 in the semis. So they've done it in a couple of different different ways. Now they have huge challenges waiting for them. How will they fare against Chaminade Julian, a team they defeated yeah. by 10 uh, just a couple weeks ago. I think it was last month at it's, home. Exactly. They did They did defeat Chaminade Julian and Coach Joe Staley's been there like we've got like 700 games or whatever. He'll come up with something down there. That'll make it a challenge for them to compete. But they have a win over them, so certainly it's going to be an even tight basketball game on the neutral floor of the shot and scene center. But then you're looking at if they can get by that Cleveland Villanova St. Joe. You know, they got the, what, the player of the year in, in D3 or one of them anyway. They, uh, they have two other guys who are second team, all Ohio. 
One guy's going to Kansas, one's going to Marist. They're 6'10", 6'9", 6'3". Right. And last year, LCC surprised them. You know, I think they went down and they were surprised that the, the, the LCC team could compete with them. Uh -huh. and I don't think that St. Joe's played really hard in that final game last year when I saw that. This year, I would not expect them to surprise St. Joe is the favorite down there. If we do get the rematch, That's it's going right. to be a great game, just for the reason that you said, yep. in that they're going to want to avenge that loss. And Carlton Bragg is a year older. Right. He's the one who's going to Kansas. He's 6'11". Right. I, I believe he only had three rebounds in that state final game. And that's if a guy who's 6'10", who was 6'10", at, at the time right. last year, to only grab three rebounds. Great job by LCC, but I don't know if it's going to play out like that again if they do meet in the state final. One would think that, that St. Joe has learned their lesson. You know, we can't come in and just show up and expect to win. And that's the way they looked when they were down there last year. Uh -huh. we're, we're here. We're good enough. We'll win. Don't worry about it. Uh, one would think that this year they will compete. Now, think of what happened a year ago, though. Jake Williams steps up and has this tremendous game. Yeah. Luke or, uh, Stewart, except off the bench, had four big points and a couple of rebounds. So if LCC can get to that game, first of all, and they have a challenge in their, in their semifinal game, we'll see if somebody can step up and make some fun plays that you're not quite expecting them to make. If not, St. Joe's the favorite, and they're going to win the game. How about the job Frank Kill has oh. done? we got to talk about it because it is – essentially a very different team. I mean, Marcus yes. Kimbo graduates, Lima Senior takes Xavier Simpson away from LCC as he transfers, right. and then you're left with a group of guys who you weren't really sure coming into the season if this was a state-bound team, and yet here they are. They're playing in Columbus on Thursday in the state semifinals. Well, they've done a really good job of going out and playing a, a tremendous schedule. You know, they played all kinds of different people from all over the place, and they've, they've played a tremendous schedule. They've gone to Michigan, they've gone to Versailles, they've been down to Dayton and played. So they played people, and then that's, they're not afraid to go. And, and for Coach Kill, that's the thing he has to do because his team doesn't have a lead to compete in. He needs games that will challenge his players every night. He's played through shoulder injuries to Cobbs and to Williams. Um, he's, he's integrated some new guys like Josh Dixon, who's had a tremendous year for them. He's got nine guys that played a year ago in the state tournament game, so they had some experience. But I think he has done a tremendous job putting his team together, keeping them focused. You know, a couple, three weeks ago, we talked about our team of the uh, teams of the year. He was yeah. my coach of the year. Yep. And he won the ballroom dancing competition too earlier. And that's year. more so important that, than coach of the well, year. Well, absolutely. Yeah. We'll have that uh, game, LCC versus Shamanad Julian, for you 10 a.m. on WOSN set on Friday morning. Obviously, it's being played Thursday. You'll be on the call with Andy. Looking forward to that. Staying in D3 right. now for sales. This is a really interesting story. <laughs> this actually broke right after we finished taping last week's show. Right. Versailles was out. They lost to Purcell Marion. Right. But a violation by Purcell Marion allowed Versailles back in, and all of a sudden they're playing in a regional final against Cincinnati Schroeder. How about that? You know, you you got everything put away. Yeah. The uniforms are done. The balls are deflated. you got guys out playing baseball, running track and tennis and getting ready for their senior prom and all that kind of stuff. And you say, wait a minute, fellas, come on back. we got one more opportunity. And they were within, what, four or five points in oh, the yeah. fourth quarter. Oh, yeah, it was quarter. a great game. So, Tremendous effort for them. You know, think if what would happen? They had a couple of days of practice yeah. or three days of practice instead of just putting one practice together. But that's that's an odd situation. And by my recollection, they're going to be the first team in the state of Ohio to lose two games in a tournament. So. <laughs> that's that's a that's a great but, point. Yeah. But a real interesting situation for them. A unique opportunity. Kyle Arns finished with 24 points in his official final game of his high school career. Now 19 in the second half. Great effort by Versailles. And you got to wonder, like you said, if if they had a little more time to prepare and. And that's just not something you're expecting. It absolutely is. It's an odd situation. And congratulations for how well they handled it. Yeah. Their fans came back and supported them, saw a picture of their student body down there. That was pretty cool. So, you know, some really good things happened, but in an odd situation. Let's finish up with D4, Kettering Regional, Marion Local, Tri-Village. A rematch of last year's regional final, yeah. and we had the same result with the Patriots coming out on top. You know, Matt, we sat here last week, and I made this incredible prediction. If the score's in the 40s or low 50s, it's Marion Local's uh -huh. game, and if it has to get into the 60s for, for Tri-Village to win, wasn't that way. Yeah. Tri-Village proved that they could play at a slower pace, slug it out with a team, go a possession-by-possession possession game, and win the basketball game. They proved another way to win a basketball game. Yeah, when I was looking at the score, you're thinking that's the pace the Flyers right. want to play at. That's that's how they're going to win this game. And Tri Village was able to match their, that style and and that strategy and, and able to get the win. Now Tri Village, interesting. This D4 state semifinal is very oh. interesting because we'll get to Wayne Trace. Wayne Trace, Delphi St. John. That was a battle at Bowling Green that you called with uh, with Mark Miller. Tremendous basketball game. And and you know the old song for all of those old guys. You know, riding the storm out. That's what I felt the Delphi St. John's was doing in the first quarter because Mary Local threw a haymaker, or not Mary Local, excuse me, Wayne Trace threw a haymaker at him. They're down 22-11. They regroup. Grothaus gets whacked in the eye. He's got this little cut right here. And it's like, okay, fellas, it's now on. And he and Odenweller and all their team really turned it on, had tremendous middle two quarters. 
But Wayne Trace found a way to win, especially defensively, to win the basketball game. That was a tremendous game. And, of course, once Wayne Trace got ahead, made a bunch of free throws late for a team that shoots about 74% from the free throw line. I yeah, really enjoyed that game. Hope you did as well on WOSN. Wayne Trace is going back to state for the first time since 2008, and they'll take on Harvest Prep. You and I will yep. be there Thursday morning. Looking forward to it. You can see that game Thursday night at 10 on WOSN, and we'll, we'll, sh we'll show you again on our full broadcast schedule later on in the show. But Wayne Trace against Harvest Prep and Delphi St. John, two MAC schools, Delphi St. John's and Marion Local, great seasons come to an end in the regional finals. They, they really would, I, and I would certainly agree with that. It was a good year for the MAC tournament-wise. We know how good St. Henry was and then the run that those teams made, and we were sales was playing in the regional, so it was a really good year for the MAC. And just to go back to that St. John's game against Wayne Trace, 15 years and out from now, with Mark Kuntz still around looking at throwback games, yeah. that'll be one that'll be on because that was a tremendous basketball game. It was back and forth all yes. the way through. Odin, let's actually let's take a look at a, how Wayne Trace helped decide this game with their defense. I mean, Alex Odenwetter, huge first half. He had 20 points right. in the first half, 15 in the second quarter. But then late in the third, early in the fourth, Coach Linder went to the triangle and two defense, and this changed the game. Yeah, he really did. And, and what's going to happen? We're going to look at the triangle and two here a little bit. You can see how they're going to play it. They're going to play man-to-man -man on Odin Weller and man-to-man -man on Grothaus and just make it difficult for anybody to get a shot, for those two guys to get a shot. And if we can back this up just a little bit here on our screen and go through it again, you can see the two guys are doubling or playing the basketball man-to-man. -man. I've kind of lost track of where they're at here, but uh, Luke Miller's got one of them. Here's one out top. Here's playing him man-to-man, -man, playing man-to-man. -man. And the other three guys are trying to play zone and just how well they're going to do it. We'll slow it down a little bit and look right here where everybody's at. We got uh, guys on top and we're playing guys through. Here's the triangle set the way it looks. Here's three guys playing zone. We're playing man here. We're playing man on the other guy. Well, I've lost track of where we've at here on our floor somewhere, but we're playing man to man. He's right behind here. He's behind. There he is down in here. So we're playing man to man with Miller and Arns playing. And you see the other three guys are playing zone. And it's not so much that uh, how effective it was because it takes the ball out of your two best ball handers' hands, but it's goofy. Nobody practices it. It's an odd situation. There are lots of ways to attack it. There's lots of ways to go at it. But until you've actually been through it in a game situation, it's a strange scenario. And so we we'll just watch it play through a little bit. Watch him come off the screen here and gets help right away. So you can, there's just so many ways that you can defend the basketball with this. And eventually we're going to get a shot. Watch the help right here. As, uh, Linder steps out and helps till Miller's able to get there. That's what the three-man zone does. And eventually, we're going to get this little baseline jump shot that's going to come up here right there, and the rebound's going to go out of bounds and into the hands of the, uh, the Wayne Trace Raiders. But you can also use this to see how much pressure you get on the ball, and they're going to get a sideline out of bounds play. Miller's going to step in and get a steal, and what a young game that young man had right here. Miller gets the steal, goes skating in for a layup, and he had a tremendous game, and, and they all did it, particularly in the second half for Wayne Trace. And that's, that was a big factor in the game. That helped was, change the whole game, and, and was, Coach was, Winder made yeah, mention it was, of it. It was tied at 43 at that point. They'd fought all the way back from that, uh, that double-digit deficit to get it to 43 all, and they changed the game around with how they played that. Great stuff, Mark. Thanks again. As always, let's close with some girls' talk because we've got state champs to yep. talk about and start with D3 versus Sales. Defeated OG in the state final, and this was such a great game. And Versailles came out on top, 49-46, came right down to the wire. Well, it really did. And, of course, the size inside when you're, what, 6-1, 6-1, 6-0 inside, they out-rebounded OG. And the thing that OG couldn't have happened to them, the Titans turned it over 18 times, Versailles just nine. Laura Bruns, 16 points, eight boards, four block shots inside. They held uh, uh, just, what, nine points, nine to four in the third quarter. So OG couldn't get off and get off many points in that quarter. Good year for the Titans. I mean, they great. really fought, but also a great year for Versailles to win a state championship. Yeah, exciting for Versailles. Yeah. Taylor Winter, a senior, had two big blocks late in that game, in game. And, and OG just wouldn't go away, though. They kept, that's their, that's their, you know, that's how they are. They yeah. just kept fighting back, kept fighting back. Versailles was able to hold on. Great showcase for our area at the state level in the state final like that, on, you know, on TV throughout the entire state. Yeah, it really was. Of course, it kind of shows a little about what the Western Buckeye League was made of. And, and the girls in Ottawa Glendorf, for their ability to compete and to work and to force you to find ways to beat them. Uh, man for man on paper, they probably were going to lose that basketball game. But their competitive nature kept it to three. It was a good basketball game.
Without a doubt. And then in D4, Fort Warmie, second that? state title in three years for yep. Carlos Eagles team, and they, and they really deserve it. You know, we talked about you know, their volleyball state championship as well, and everybody goes, well, it's easy. You go from being a volleyball state champion to a basketball state champion. Well, sure, you have to have athletes to do that, but the skill sets are so different that to be able to prepare through the summer to play in those two competitive environments, volleyball and basketball, both the, the skill sets are different, the running, the jumping, shooting, foul shooting, defensive position, the, the, the coordination of where you're gonna put everybody defensively and offensively between the two sports. They're, they're, yes, you have to have athletes to win, but those are two coaches that have done great jobs with their programs to get them to the state tournament and to win championships. Jess Berger, huge game for the junior, 25 points, seven rebounds. Kelly Turner had 15 points. Holly Fry had a double-double, 10 points, 10 boards, and that was pretty much it. I mean, yeah. there's a, a buck or two here from some of the other players, but those three really carried the load and great team effort, well deserved state title for Je Fort Warren. Jessica Borger, 9 out of 10 from the free throw line in the state tournament championship game. When you can step up under that kind of pressure, make 90% of your free throws and get fouled enough to get to the foul line 10 times, really good performance by her. So congrats to Versailles and Fort Warmie. We'll have hopefully a at least one, maybe two, yeah. maybe three state champions to crown in divisions two, three, and four after this weekend. And just here's a reminder of what you can see where, where we will be. We have highlights of the Defiance game coming to you on Friday night. But in the meantime, we'll also have two full-length games for you. And you can catch that D4 state semifinal, Wayne Trace versus Harvest Prep. That'll be seen Thursday at 10 p.m. on WOSN. And if you miss that, you can catch it Friday at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Division three state semifinals, LCC versus Chaminade Julian. Friday, 10 a.m. on WOSN. And then Saturday, also will re-air it at 10 a.m. on WTLW. Be sure to check online at WOSN.TV for highlights. And if Wayne Trace, LCC, or Defiance advance, we will have full highlights and post-game reaction for you on Saturday. Now, Mark, that'll do it for this season of Mark's Madness, and we appreciate everything you did. And just want to get you, the audience out there, make you aware that we all know about your great coaching career. Oh. But <laughs> we, dug, we did some digging, and we uh -oh. found... Some amazing oh, pictures boy. of you at Defiance College. Look at that guy. <laughs> Number 33 right there. Same uh, hair. That's a long time ago. Same hair. The cybers are gone. Look at that guy. There yeah. he is on the hardwood, Defiance College. You remember those days? I do for a fact. Coach Holmberger completely changed his offensive scheme and his defensive scheme. He went from a slow it down, walk it up to, hey, you know what? I got nine guys that can play. We're going to press and run. That team averaged better than 90 points a game, as you just looked at right there. Had a lot of good friends and a lot of fun playing that. Those are some old photographs. The style has changed a little, but the game of basketball, not so much. As you've seen, Mark knows exactly what he's talking about. So thank you very much, Mark. That's going to do it for this season on Mark's Madness. Thank you for coming along the ride with us, and we will see you next fall.